Cross country racing is a pretty conservative branch of our sport and the bikes with their saddles halfway to the moon, stems the length of a country and minimal suspension are completely removed from the bikes you and I ride today. But as race courses have got more technical, race bike geometry and suspension have had to evolve in order to follow suit. We want to find out whether with all the developments, a cross country race bike is now a viable alternative to a short travel trail bike. Can riders as well as racers benefit from the efficiency and low weight without being hindered on the real fun parts of the trail? To help answer those questions, we've assembled five of the latest models from the biggest brands. So let's meet the contenders. So first up, we've got the KTM Scarp Master. Sporting just 90 millimeters of travel in a full carbon frame, this is the lightest bike on test and by quite some way. It's also instantly recognizable as a KTM thanks to the signature black and orange paint job. Never ones to follow, Cannondale Scalpel SI Carbon 3 plows its own path when it comes to tech. With a lefty, Cannondale's single leg suspension fork and integration everywhere, it shows how far the company is willing to go to improve on existing design. Specialized Epic was probably the first full suspension bike to start winning races at a world level and it's been a benchmark by which other bikes have been judged. The Comp Carbon version we have here benefits from specialized brain-driven rear suspension. Giant's Anthem is another model that stood the test of time. Over the years it's gone from 26 inch wheels to 29er to 27 and a half and now back to 29 again. So it'll be interesting to see if Giant have finally got the formula right with the Anthem Advance 29. And finally Scott's Spark RC900 team. Probably the most successful race bike at the moment underneath world champion Nino Schurter. The Spark RC was the bike Scott developed to get Nino to ride 29er wheels in order to win gold at the Rio Olympics. So those are the bikes. It leaves me just one thing to do to be able to get ready to go cross country racing. Scarp Master drops rear-wheel travel down to 90mm in the frame where the flex in the stays eliminates a complement of pivots. All this goes towards the Scarp's low overall weight. In fact, it's the only bike here to drop below the 11kg barrier. Despite having 10mm less travel than most of its competitors, the Spark doesn't feel like it loses out. The more active design gives it a softer, more sensitive feel. Even if to achieve this, the Fox Float's shock and Float 32 fork can feel a little too eager to blow through their travel. For those that like to match collar and cuffs, it's a little quirky to see a SRAM Eagle drivetrain mixed with Shimano XT brakes. Fortunately, it all works superlatively, so power delivery and control are both first rate. One thing that instantly needs change on the KTM is the foam grips. Our test pair started to work loose and spin during our very first ride, making it the only KTM we've seen with two throttles. Cannondale's unique 100mm lefty suspension fork is an inverted design that stacks everything into the single left leg. It's stiffer than more traditional twin leg designs, but not quite as sensitive through its travel. The lefty is also a bit harder to live with, especially if you take the front wheel out regularly. Stan's Crest rims used to be the only choice for cross country races, and the new Mark III version on the scalpel sees an increase in internal width to 25 millimeters for better tire support. Cannondale has also taken the slightly bold step in specking a trail bike style wide handlebar. In this case, an own brand 760 mm flat carbon bar. It's incredible how a few extra millimeters can have a positive impact on the handling. But whereas the cockpit encourages confidence, the high bottom bracket and steep angles also rein it in on the descents. We also really struggled to balance the feel of the fork and shock. And as the lockout lacks any form of threshold adjustment, you often feel that the bike is either a touch too soft or too firm for properly efficient riding. A trunnion mounted shock allows the spark to run a longer stroke without taking up more real estate providing the real suspension with more sensitivity on smaller hits without being overworked on longer descents. To balance the travel out back, the RC900 team gets a 100mm Fox 32 float step cast fork, featuring the slightly less complex Grip 3 damper. But the defining feature of the Spark suspension is the twin lock handlebar remote. This isn't just a lockout system though, 
It changes the travel and the damping characteristics of the suspension simultaneously to grant the spark with rapid adaptability to any situation. There's no need to hark on about the proficiency of SRAM's GX Eagle shifting, but suffice to say it provides precise, reliable gear changes no matter the conditions. But from a racing perspective, the only downside is the additional weight of the alloy chainset and massive GX cassette. At the heart of the Spark is the match made in heaven of the stiff chassis, forward thinking geometry, combined with the twin lock powered suspension. Yes, the rear suspension feels a little too eager to run through its travel in the open setting, but ride the Spark in the 70mm traction mode and nothing can match its ability to turn pedal power into raw speed. 2018 sees a ground up redesign for the Epic since its inception almost 15 years ago, with almost every part of the frame evolving. But by far the biggest change to the new Epic has been specialised drop in its iconic FSR suspension design, replacing the horse link chainstay pivot with a much lighter flex stay. The smart part of specialised bump sense and brain shock has also been placed closer to the rear axle, making it much more sensitive to impacts. Many racers will consider the RockShox Reba fork a little too trail focused for a bike like the Epic, but in reality it weighs only a handful of grams more than RockShox SID cross country fork. Specialised in-house finishing kit has a quality construction and shows some real thought, like the Epic coming with a higher volume 2.3 inch tyre on the front to help offset the lack of grip a super fast rolling shallow tread cross country tyre can create. The Epic stands out as being the fastest bike for climbing and sprinting on less technical terrain. The brain shock automatically eliminated any loss of power due to sloppy pedaling dynamics or exaggerated body language. The Anthem Advance is the only bike in the test with an aluminium rear triangle. Whilst this might cause it to lose out a little in the weight department, it helps to make the Anthem the lowest priced bike on test, and amazingly with budget to spare for carbon wheels. Despite only having 90mm of travel, Giant's Maestro suspension system helps give the Anthem a very active and engaging ride character, with stacks of traction. But with only a shock mounted on and off lockout, the bipolar setting means it's either been a little too playful or a touch too firm. Married to the Anthem frame is the Charger Damped 100mm travel RockShox SID fork, providing a level of stiffness that belies its thinner 32mm upper tubes. Adding this to a more upright riding position and relaxed geometry made the Anthem the bike to beat on every descent. The super wide 780mm Contact SL Trail handlebar also provides confident handling far removed from cross country norms, but if this feels a little too wide there's nothing to stop you from cutting the bar to your preferred width. It's obvious from this test that what we have here are five bikes that represent the current evolutionary steps of full suspension cross country race machines. The KTM Spark has its ratio features skewed most towards the traditional end of cross country. It's not a bad race bike by any stretch, it's the lightest on test and has an agility to its handling, but the short steep geometry makes you expend more energy manhandling the bike on technical terrain. Cannondale Scalpel and Specialized Epic also stick to the cross country script but are full of technical innovation. Cannondale should be commended for the stiffness of the lefty fork and Specialize also for its unique brain shock. Giant's Anthem pushes in completely the opposite direction and feels more like a short travel trail bike that's been modified for cross country racing rather than the other way round. But while we struggled a little with the running order of the four also runs, one bike stood head and shoulders above the rest due to its pace in every situation. It's no surprise that Nino Scherter has enjoyed such success on the world stage when he has the incredible Scott Spark underneath him. Its sheer sense of urgency, trail bike geometry and practical efficient suspension really makes the Scott Spark RC900 team the bike to beat. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment below for any other bikes you'd like us to test.